do, you know, you do the little banter, you do your audio check, you make sure everything's good, and then you, know, you, you get into it. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to start off with intros, formal. Hey everyone, welcome to the Steve Walter Photo Podcast, season one, everything is art. Um, today we have with us, would you like to introduce yourself, sir? Uh, my name is Michael Charleglio. How do you say your last name again? Charleglio. That's why everyone calls you Mike C, right? Yeah. <laughs> Mike C. That's Mike C. Everyone knows me as Mike C. Mike C. And it's funny because even like if, just so the group that we have, right? Like mm. Matt, Andy, Will, yeah. and they'll just, no, none of them call you Mike. You're always Mike C. Yeah. And even though I know, even though the only person I know that they're talking about is you, so you, you would be the only Mike that they would be talking about, but it's always Mike C. Is yeah. that with like everyone, like the whole group? No, it's... It kind of just, just my them. BMX group and that, yeah, because, you know, I rode bikes with them and yeah. anybody that knows them and us. That knows you, you're my That Mike group C. of people, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because um, I have plenty of new friends that don't, don't call me <laughs> Mike like, C. Oh, you're Mike. Cool. What's up, Mike? Yeah. I mean, I guess when you're growing up, there's a lot of Mike, so you got yeah. you to... I saw there was some video. The there was some video that I saw, and I, I didn't watch it, but I saw that there was like a preview of some video, and it was like, "Stop naming your children Mike." And I was like, <laughs> "Really? Someone made a video on this? Like, I get it, Mike, John. I didn't realize Steve is a super common name. Yeah, I didn't realize that. I've only met like three Steves, four Steves in my life. I mean, here and there I've met a couple, but like growing up, like in school, yeah, there was like, there's three of us. Yeah, Chenoweth, Hudak, and Walter. Like that was it. It was us. I don't think I met any other Steve's, but then come to find out, like Steve's a super common name. I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, it's not a Mike, it's not yeah. a John, but still. I think I saw in a book that Mike or Michael was the most popular for like ten years in a row. Yeah, I bet. Well, you know, while I when I was oh uh, yeah, you know, during when era. you were born. Yep. <laughs> I think yeah, mine was in the top ten, as I recall. Steve was in the top yeah. ten. That's interesting to look at to see like the trends of parents naming their kids. And I'll tell you what, man, that's a difficult thing naming a child. That's real hard. <laughs> It's so stressful to just be like, I'm giving you an identity with a label. Yeah. I, what am I going to call you forever? And are you going to like it or are you not going to like it? Well, it doesn't matter because I created you so I can call you whatever I want to call you. But then it's also like, yeah, but you're going to be your own person one day. All this psychological stuff hits you. It's weird. It's weird though because everybody's name usually fits them. Like I look like a Mike. You look like Steve. Yeah, I guess I do look like know? a Steve, huh? You're right. Yeah. It's and there really are weird. some. Isn't it funny though when you meet someone and you're like, you look like a Jeff, and they're like, no, I don't. My name's Greg. It's like, nah, but you look like a Jeff. It's weird how it's almost like your parents screwed so, yeah. up, man. Yeah. They missed the mark. You're Jeff, dude. Why do they call you Greg? You should yeah. change your name. But you're right. You do look like a Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Does anyone call you Michael? Uh, my sister and my girlfriend. So they're a little formal. A couple yeah. people do. And anybody that's met me through them will call me Michael. Because that's I how you've been introduced. introduced. Yeah. Um, so I had uh, an ex-girlfriend. She called her sister Niffer. And that's what I was introduced as my sister Niffer. So I literally called this person Niffer. I know her real name, but I never... And if I say it, it's weird. Like, it's very weird. Because it's like, that's your nickname. And it's the <laughs> same. Like, I introduce people to my brother as Duckman. And it's like, they know him as Duckman. And it's like... Dude, what's his name? It's like, it's John. It's like, oh, okay. It's like, it was Duckman. Dude, when I go shoot weddings and I meet the couple, I meet the family, I'm like, this is my brother Duckman. I was like, you can call him John if you want, but that's going to be weird. So I'm going to be calling him Duckman. So if you guys want to, call him Duckman. He'll respond to that. Um, so it's always funny. And then one year, and I've shared this before, I think, on the podcast, but I'll share it with you. One year or one wedding, uh, the family was like, oh my God, we have a Duckman too. And it was a little boy. It was, I don't think it was the ring bearer, but it was just like a little boy in the family. It's like, we call him Duckman. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like, that's real weird. There's a grown man and like a little child. Yeah. Seems more fitting for the child. Um, so, so you hinted at, so there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about with you, right? So okay. everything is art, right? The whole idea behind this is meeting people, connecting with people with sort of this foundation I've discovered, this foundation of photography has sort of been there. Um, but then the things that kind of stem out from that, right? And that, that I see that when I meet photographers, right? That's an art form. Um, no argument there. And when I start to discover, well, that well, that photographer also, you know, is a musician, or that photographer is mm -hmm. also a BMX writer. That's an art form. Mm -hmm. That photographer is also, and I would call you. I don't know what I would actually. How do you call it? Um, you're not. I wouldn't call you a botanist, right? Because that's like a that's a scientist of plants, right? But you're. Would you say gardener? A farmer. 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 I, I mean, am. like that's kind of whenever farming is um, an art. I'm, like asked on some kind of questionnaire what's your job what do you do yeah i say farmer farmer yeah because i really don't have any other jobs right now that's it so i'm just which is awesome yeah so so tell me about so you you 
before we let BMX photography, we'll get to that. Talk to me about currently you as a farmer. So, so what are you doing right now? Yeah, well, we we bought three acres of land in Hawaii. Yeah, and, where in Hawaii? What part? Uh, the Big Island, where the about Big Island. 15 miles from all that uh, volcanic activity that's going on. That just happened. Yeah, or it's so, still it's still currently happening. Yeah, and that's crazy. Nobody knows when it's going to end. It could go for 30 years. Like, can we pause and just talk about that for a second? Like, the Earth is just spitting out rock, right? Yeah. Magma, lava, all that stuff, right? It's crazy when you think about that, right? And and what's nuts is that there's civilization around it, and call it Mother Nature, call it the Earth, call it whatever. It's like doesn't give a shit, doesn't give a shit that you exist, and it's like right. I'm gonna spit out Earth because this is what I'm doing. Uh, maybe you're gonna die, maybe you're not. So it's been crazy, huh? Yeah, I mean where it was coming out previously for probably you know 30 years or so. Yeah. There was no people living there. It wasn't residential like it is now. Um, so people were allowed to go up and look at it and everything. But yeah. it totally changed course and popped up like where people live, you know. And like that's there's nuts. over probably a thousand people homeless Damn, from it. You know? That sucks. Um, but where we are, it's not uh, too much of an issue. It's not a threat to us. You're safe. Um, we do smell it every. What is it? Was it sulfuric? Is that it? Yeah, it smells a bit like sulfur. after you've seen like a firework show. It's like a sulfur smell. Okay, yeah. Um, but that's just constantly. Yeah, it's usually in the morning and when it rains, it kind of pulls it all down. Uh, it seems like. Um, but it's it's just a little bit of a nuisance, it, and right. also as the, the rain is a bit acidic. Uh, we've had goldfish that it, it's rained a lot, and the goldfish have died from it. Whoa. Yeah. So how does that? So that's got to affect your crops then, for sure. Um, to to some extent, think, right? Yeah, yeah but you they're still. They, like, but you just had a big harvest. I saw you were pulling out some bananas recently, right? Yeah, and uh, um, a lot of papayas now. I'm not there, obviously, but my girlfriend's been showing me pictures of. I think she harvested like 15 papayas Damn. the other day, and I mean, it's it's been this feeling of like, will it ever, like. Will we ever get to pick things? You know, yeah. taking care of this stuff for two years now and seeing and growing nothing. it, yeah, and <laughs> and then I and then I leave and now it's all ready. You Mike, know? where are you? We got the papaya now. What are you doing? Get back yeah. here! But that's exciting. So so talk to me about that, right? So you you move out to Hawaii. You were in a, a shipping container. Are you still in the shipping container? Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, we don't totally love the shipping container. Sure. But um, it's it's sort of like this temporary, like more. A long-term temporary, I always say. Yeah. Um, where we could pretty much do anything with it now. Like, it's there on blocks. And yeah. if we need to move or if we build something and want to sell it, mm. it, it can move. So we're cool. investing money in it to the point where, like, it's we're not putting anything in. We're not building it in. Like, it could be moved. That's uh, Okay, gotcha. So anything th that we do to it is, like mostly in interior so it's like, not a permanent change to it where someone might go well i don't want that like yeah. you guys made it your own and i mean the cool thing about sh a shipping container is like i could put it on a boat you could i yeah. could bring it here you yeah, know like you could so you could literally ship it you know that's what it's there for they, you could literally ship use. it back here and be like oh that's my house yeah. buy a plot of land and just drop it there i mean you could fill it to the brim like that's what people do with them they like yeah. whereas if you were to take your car and ship it from the mainland to Hawaii. Yeah. It has to be completely empty. Really? Yeah. I had a friend that tried to do it. He put all his carpentry tools in there and everything, and he nope. packed it, and they, he pulls up to the, the boat, and they're like, no, nah, you got to have it empty. Oh, what a so, nightmare that is. Thank God he was a carpenter, and he went to Home Depot and built himself a box in, okay, in right, the parking sure. lot. <laughs> Put all the stuff in there. I was like, okay, take this too, you know. Yeah, can you can you put a check? Uh, I'm gonna check this luggage over here, right? I was trying to check it in my car. Yeah. So so you're living in a shipping container, right? But you have like, um, so so share your YouTube channel because I want I want people to see the stuff that you put out. Oh uh, yeah, our, our YouTube channel is called Off Grid Hawaii. Off and Grid Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah, we're just like showing people how we're doing things. A lot of this is like just so bizarre to people, and it's um, an art form, man. I mean, the way we're living and... Uh, You're off the grid, living. right? I mean, for for, for all intents of... Uh, slight purposes, right? Like, you still have to... Like, part of why you came back here, you had to go to the dentist because you still got to go to the dentist, right? Like, things like yeah, that come up. I mean, up. there's dentists there. It was just my insurance thing. Oh, right, true, true. So, true. Like, I don't want to um, confuse that. <laughs> but still, the, the fact that, like, you're farming and living on, on a plot of land that you bought 
in a shipping container. Like you built an outhouse, right? That's one of the videos that you have. Yeah. Like you yeah. literally built it. And like as you're going through it, I'm like sitting there watching it. And I'm like, how does he know to do this? So how do you know to do that stuff? Are you just Googling stuff? You know, I mean, before I had a YouTube channel, yeah. I watched YouTube for years. You to know, see I, what I other feel people. like I've learned more on YouTube than I did at school. Isn't that crazy, though? Because all I need to do, anything I'm interested in, I'm going to learn, right? Mm -hmm. Like, things that you're not interested in, obviously, you're not going to learn. I don't care about you're changing you're not paying brakes attention, on a car. You know? nope. I ask YouTube a question, and they have the answer yeah everything and anything i've ever wanted multiple to know. videos right yeah. like you're like oh i like this guy or i like this oh this guy oh here's a different take so you even have multiple resources or sometimes right when you search for something you know you get some 13 year old kid maybe not for the things that you're searching in that case but yeah. like in general if i'm looking for like software like how to do something compositing whatever some 13 year old kids tell me how to do it. i'm like that's amazing but also like dude you're way off you don't know what you're talking about <laughs> hold on let me go to a different resource yeah so, and you just that's cool pick the people you relate to and yep. you know like you learn so much from and I guess that's kind of why we started. We had a lot of friends that do it too. Yeah. So they were just really, um, like, they got us to do it. Yeah. And uh, you're just giving back then. Yeah. And now, I like, that's what pushes me to keep doing it is uh, knowing that I'm helping people um, that's cool. get where they want. Yeah. I, we get it in the comments a lot, just like, oh, thanks for having the channel and stuff. That's awesome. You know, we're still small. Um, we've had a couple videos that gone like semi-viral, but Dope. we're small still, so like we're not making a lot of money on it. Right, but you do um, have the the AdSense connected to it, right? You do. Yeah, have, I mean, we're making money on some it, revenue. but yeah. Which, hey man, why not? You're sitting. I mean, we were talking about this just before we started recording. Was that like even me making this podcast, right? There's a lot of effort, and I realize. So, so for those that are listening and watching, I apologize. There has been some gaps of time, but mm. I'm I'm expecting a second child soon, and and I've trying to book work. And so while this is not a primary at all, by any means, a primary source of income for those that it is, yeah. I'm not saying it is for you, but I know some friends of mine that I have where it's like, this is what you do. You sit and you take the time to come up with the content. You record that, you produce it, you do everything, you put it out there. And I don't think people recognize until they actually do it. They don't realize how much work, genuine work is involved. Now, don't get me wrong. There is no complaining coming from me at all. I love this stuff. It's amazing <laughs> and it's so cool. And I'm sure you feel the same way, but there's work involved. So, hey, why wouldn't you say, like, give me a couple bucks, man? Yeah. And uh, we actually, it was really cool. We had one of our viewers just mentioned that he wanted to donate to us. Oh, yeah. And um, I was like, well, um, I didn't really want to give out personal information, like, you know, send me money or something. So I, I set up a Patreon. Dope. And... I got I got a few people, you know. What's your share your do you know your Patreon? You share your Patreon link. Yeah, I think it's the same same thing, just Patreon, uh off grid Hawaii. Off grid Hawaii, perfect. Yeah. Keep that branding, dude. Yeah. And I, I, I did the same for this. And and it's a great way for you to just have look, it's 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 no different when you think about all this stuff and we were talking about before, right? New media versus old media, whatever. Old media, it's like, you know, you had advertisers, they gave you money, you produce content that people watched and consumed and that cycle just continued and we're kind of, we're just eliminating those commercials right now, at mm -hmm. least for those that are starting out, right? Eventually you could get a sponsor, right? You could get some type of advertiser that shows up and says, hey, we're gonna give you 10 grand a month, just make sure you talk about our product, yeah. and you see people do it all the time, they're like, hey, this podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Now this podcast was not brought to you by Squarespace, <laughs> but it's like, that's what people do, so Squarespace is kicking them a couple bucks, yeah. because they know people are gonna hear about Squarespace, so why wouldn't you just say for yourself, hey, I got a Patreon, if, if you want to help out, if you're enjoying this, and that's what's kind of cool is like, if you're enjoying this, contribute. If you're, if, if you're enjoying this and you don't want to, no pressure, yeah. man. I'm still going to make it. Yeah. Are you getting revenue for your podcast alone or just your... So it's, it's specifically Patreon. set up for the podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for those, um, and I'll actually, I'm going to take a moment. Mike, Ken, Scott, John, and Mel, thank you guys so much for contributing because that's amazing. Like the fact that they are helping me help create this, yeah. right? Um, because even in a podcast, right, there's hosting fees. YouTube mm -hmm. is free, right? But yeah. for podcasting to have the RSS feed to distribute yeah. all the stuff, blah, 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 there's hosting fees. So there is an expense. Uh, but I have it just set up right now for the podcast. Um, and ultimately, like, I would love to be able to do more educational stuff because I love teaching. Like, I love sharing. And that's part of why I wanted yeah. to create this, kind of like what you're saying with yeah. your channel. Yeah. It's like, I want to share. I want to give back. But at the same time, I want to know that I'm being funded to do that so that I can live. Like, yeah. that's – it's not like – it's not like, dude, hey, I want to buy, you know, a Tesla from the money that you're giving. No, it's like I want to just not have to 
pay, pay a whole lot yourself. of money. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And that's that's what's cool about it. It gives the people that believe in the message I'm spreading. Yeah. It gives them a feeling of that they're helping spread that message. So totally. Um, it's not like it's a lot of money, right? It could be a dollar, it could be five bucks. But where I was going with that was um, I sensed a bit of friction when I put the video out about our Patreon uh, between uh, our YouTube viewers, I think, because I got a lot of people that unsubbed the day we put that out. Really? Which is interesting. Oh, so almost like you're uh, you're selling out. Yeah, you're and I don't know. I, this is just speculation, but I'm thinking YouTube didn't like the video either. You know. But I don't know. That's right. That's an interesting thing too, right? How much of that crossover is there? Because you're right, man. At the end of the day, YouTube is a free service. They can yeah. do whatever the freak. When you click that, I agree to these terms and conditions. I didn't read them. I don't know if you did, but I'm sure in there somewhere it says we can terminate your account whenever we want. Hmm. But there are people that are making a living, like a good living, right? A five figure living hmm. off of YouTube content. And then if YouTube decides to just pull the plug, that's it, man. You're done. Yeah. So who's to say that they couldn't do something, right, where either they don't share, they don't, the algorithm doesn't push yeah. that video out to as many people, or who knows what. That's interesting, mm -hmm. though. Yeah, the algorithm, the algorithm is really a mystery yeah. still to, like... Because you have to subscribe, but then you also have to hit the bell for the reminder to, yeah. to be told that you were subscribed to a channel. Like, it's silly, People man. say they have it figured out, but I, no, they nobody don't. does. No, they don't. Not unless you work at YouTube. Yeah. Not unless you work for Google, like, and you know a guy, you don't. Yeah. I mean, you might have done some testing and kind of figured out, like, this idea. Like, I have a pretty good idea of how Instagram's algorithm works mm -hmm. for the most part. Um, because, for example, like, I haven't been posting a lot of content in my actual feed, but I've been posting a lot of stories. Mm -hmm. So, Instagram has been rewarding me with stories with, with still pushing my content because I'm still getting subscribers. Mm -hmm. I'm still getting feedback because people are seeing my stories. So, Instagram's saying, hey, we're going to show them your images, too, because there's... Because there's almost more involvement with the stories, yeah. right? Like it's it's current, and I found that there's more value in that mm. currently Interesting. than there has been for me posting in my feed. I still post in my feed, but not nearly as much as I used to since stories have been about. Yeah. Um, and stories, uh, you know, that whole thing is is interesting in itself. Uh, not to dive down that that rabbit hole. Um, so uh, acidic rain comes down, hits the crops. So far, they're good. You got lots of papaya. Banana, what other kind of stuff do you, what, what other stuff you Yeah, grow so with? what we do to counter the acidic rain is we put calcium in the soil. Oh. So our fertilizer. Science, dude, yeah, science. Our fertilizer <laughs> that we use um, has 7% calcium, and I also put coral calcium that's dredged from um, the uh, oceans, like on the oh. Kona side. So they're dredging constantly for um, the, the uh, cruise ships and the boats, the, like the deeper ones. Oh, okay. Um, and instead of just like throwing that throwing stuff, it out. they use it, you sure. know, like, so they're packaging is really cheap. It's like a local product and like, I'm really happy to be using it. Yeah. Um, well, it's, and it's, it's the circle of life too, right? Yeah. Like you, you've the, taken it and then now you're putting it back. The other option would have been like, uh, like ag lime, like limestone and yeah, stuff, yeah, which yep. is imported. That is, doesn't really grow you're, there. You're so. going to pay an arm and a leg for that, man. Yeah. And it's double the price and you know. Yeah. That's um, nuts. So it has trace minerals in it too. Like I, I've got it down to where I use like two products, like the fertilizer and the coral calcium. That's awesome. And that's it. And then the mulch that um, right. that we uh, use. And you've got good crops coming in. Yeah, and a lot of them are like long-term crops, like trees. Right. You know, like fruit trees that take five years. Do you have ten mango years. trees? Yeah, <laughs> mangoes are interesting because uh, it rains so much there that when. Uh, it rains the f the flowers get knocked off uh, so they never you need a good dry spell for yeah, mangoes from, interesting i get a lot of people asking about mangoes and i did too when i moved there i was like mangoes are the shit yeah somebody's like what do you want to grow and i was like mangoes was one of them yeah and they're like well i don't know about that mm. <laughs> so that stinks so what what has been your your the largest uh, call it harvest i guess what, what's been your your biggest producer Ah, uh, bananas so far. Bananas. Um, we get a lot of papayas and lilikoi now. Lilikoi is another word for uh, passion fruit. Oh, okay. They call it lilikoi in Hawaii. Lilikoi. Um, yeah, I mean, we've got some root crops. I, I did sweet potatoes, cassava, nice. which is also yucca, and also tapioca has three names. 
Oh. Mostly, most common. So I know is, tapioca pudding. Yeah. Right? So tapioca, yeah. yuca, and cassava? Cassava, yeah. Cassava, yeah. yeah. All, oh, cool. all different countries call it different things. So, sure. um, tomato, tomato, you know. Yeah. And then uh, the traditional Hawaiian root vegetable um, root crop is called taro, or they call it kalo. But, um, taro. Taro. I think I've heard, taro root. I think I've heard of that. Yeah. That's like a thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, f- I feel like that's like a, a some type of... Um, uh, uh, what's the term? Some remedy. What's the, uh, uh, not homeopathic, right? Is that the word mm. that I want? Homeopathic remedy? I'm Just natural sure. remedy. I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm pulling shit out of my ass. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you guys have some, some good, so are you taking that and are you selling that or is that just to feed you guys uh, or, or is well, it kind of in between that? Eventually I want to be able to sell it. And that's yeah. why I call myself a farmer when they say, what's your occupation? Right. Cause um, that's the goal. You know, I'm not making any money now on it, but, um, you know, it's, you know, it's common that um, people go to farms and pick apples themselves here, you know, and blueberries and peaches and stuff. Right, right. Um, it's really unheard of in Hawaii. I've, I've like never... A, a pick your own at Bishop's yeah, is not so, what you do there. I mean, I'd like to have, like, this private group where there's people I can trust to come over my house, set up a Facebook page, and huh? say, uh, uh, our avocado tree is going off right now, like... You know, if you want avocados, come pick them. Interesting. And, so, so that uh, potentially could be an untapped market that's there. Yeah, and a, like real niche, like um, thing where people can come and pick their own food and know exactly where it came from and yeah. meet me and stuff and know that I grew it yeah. organically and stuff. Right, like, they're meeting just one dude, not like Bishop's. Bishop's is a family and like yeah. you don't even ever see anyone. It's like, oh, are you Mr. Bishop? No, I'm not Mr. Bishop. <laughs> my, name's, my name's Jeff. Now you look like a Greg. Yeah. Sorry. Um, that was a little callback there. But I'm laughing at myself. Um, so that would be really cool then, right? Because they're meeting you and your girlfriend. Yeah. And you say, you guys did all this. Like, hey, what's in the soil? You know exactly what's in the yeah, soil. I can tell you. You've seen my videos, every, too. Right. You go watch my videos. You know where I poop. Literally, you know where I poop. Yeah. So you know that you're getting good quality food. But like you said, you don't want to open that up to the general public right, because yeah. that's your land. That's your yeah. property. That's your livelihood. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. So, I mean, it'd be friends and you know people that I meet in public, and then I can trust. Right. So, like um, you said, yeah, private group to say, "Hey, we got more avocado than we can handle. Yeah. We don't want it to go to waste. Why don't you guys come here and uh, give us a couple bucks for it?" Yeah. And there's always like I could sell to vendors and stuff and have them sell for True. me. Right. Or I could set up my own stand somewhere. It's like it's really weird. There are people set up literally on the side of the road I was about to and ask. sell whatever. Like people go fishing, they'll set up. <laughs> they'll just. Selfish, right out of the cooler, yeah. right there. Right out of the yeah. <laughs> I pulled over my bike or my car, and it's like pop the trunk. Hey, you want some fish? I got fish. I literally yeah. just caught it. Yeah, like I mean, even even cookies. Like somebody will bake cookies, and they'll sit on the side, side of the road and say, you know, homemade cookies. Like lemonade stand. Yeah. I mean, I guess some people do that here with farms, right? They'll set up like you know, here's some carrots, here's some corn, right? Yeah, like I've but seen I that. I could just picture the cops coming and shutting you down in a second. In it a second, doesn't right. happen there. Like, like where, where's your where's your license? Where's your FDA registration or whatever it is? you know yeah. like no you can't do that so it's definitely more free form where you can just be like I got a bunch of avocados I'm gonna sit down and yeah you know or even go to a popular avocados. like tourist spot and right I imagine do they have farmers markets there is that a thing there yeah I mean, okay it's pretty big yeah. yeah you can go to a different one every day okay you know, yeah that makes sense it. then um that's so cool that's, though. yeah so let me do this we're gonna take a quick break we're gonna come back um, and I want to I want to dive into oh I should have come up with a cool pun to be like I want to jump into or I want to I want I was going to talk about BMX so I wanted to come up with oh, I, yeah. I don't have a cool pun so we're going to pause for a second. Hey guys, Steve here. Just a quick word from our sponsor, me basically. Um, so there's a couple of things I wanted to just say, uh, and then we'll get right back to the show. I swear. First and foremost, thank you guys so much for listening. I really, really, really appreciate it, and I also would appreciate if you like the show, you like the guests, you like the conversation, you like the content. Please share this information with the people that you know. I definitely want to do more of this. I really enjoy doing it, so I hope you guys are enjoying it. The other things that I wanted to mention, too, if you wanted to help support the podcast, you can head over to my Patreon page, patreon.com slash stevewalterphoto. Over there, I have some rewards. I'm going to be restructuring it in not too long from now, where basically part of it is going to be to help support the podcast, but part of it is also going to be to your benefit, where basically what I'm going to be doing is creating, call them classes, if you will, but but tutorials where I'll be able to share 
um, direct feedback to the questions that you guys have and also content that I just come up with in video form. There's also going to be rewards where I'll be able to do some consulting for you, whether that be through video or if you came to the studio. So there's going to be more coming. So I'm excited about that. I hope you guys are too. Other ways that you can check out the stuff that I'm doing, you can head over to my Instagram, at Steve Walter Photo, and every Tuesday I provide a, what I call, a Tuesday tip. And really what that is, is a way for you guys to just get some, some information, some quick down and dirty information, and no worries if you miss it on a Tuesday, you can find that on my IGTV page. So if you uh, head over to my Instagram, you can link over to my IGTV from there, where I will be posting all of the Tuesday tips moving forward. Other things that are going on, you can check out this podcast on my YouTube page, on SoundCloud, on iTunes, and in the Google Play Store. On my YouTube page, I also have some other content there as well. I'm gonna be doing some instructional stuff and just some of the things that I've been working on. So uh, definitely head over there. And last but not least, guys, you can head over to my Eventbrite page to see the classes that I'm hosting. This is something that I'm really excited to be able to provide and to do for those that are really getting into photography or just that are a little bit more experienced and maybe wanna dive in deeper. I hate using that cliche term, but it is the truth. Also, you can find the link directly to my Eventbrite page through my Instagram profile. So that'll always be available there. Head over, check out some of the classes that I have. And any questions, comments, feedback, please send it my way, guys. I want this to be a two-way street. That's why social media is great, right, is that you can have that conversation. So uh, I love that you guys share with me, and I want to continue to share with you. Now, back to the show. So I, I want to talk a little bit about your BMX background, right? Yeah. So not that there's any real connection or segue from farming to BMX, but maybe you might have some connection to it. I don't know. Like dirt is the one thing that I'm thinking that unifies the two. I think one is, uh, well, we don't really have dirt in Hawaii. So. You don't have dirt in Hawaii. It's just lava rock. It's lava rock. Yeah. <gasps> I mean, some places do, but not where we are. You don't have dirt. No. I mean, we make our dirt and the, the earth has been making dirt for, you know, couple hundred years but or you're using the mulch so just basically chopped yeah. up trees which yeah. still isn't dirt but then the lava rock i guess has enough nutrients in it where um maybe you, you really need to just buy dirt and that's what you plant with yeah interesting i didn't realize that okay, okay so that's not a connection <laughs> to bmx at well, all what i was thinking is like farming is where i am now bmx is where i started but the photography was in between Yes. As far as oh, look the at you. art See? stuff. See, I don't have to create segues, dude. I let the guests create segues. So so let's go. Um, you want to talk about photography? You want to talk about BMX? We can start with the BMX because that's let's what got me into BMX. photography. For sure. So so BMX, um, and, and that's kind of, well, I met you through the other photographers that I know, and you know them through BMX, right? right? So when did, you, when did you guys all start, or when did you get into BMX? Um, well, the cool thing about BMX is like, you meet people from other towns like when everybody's yeah. in high school they're just meeting other people Same from kids. their own town and yep. like with us there was a, a couple of us in Hamden High School and uh, every weekend or whenever we had free time we'd go travel to different skate parks and just meet people that were the same age as us and yeah. were into the same things and then we'd go on road trips even further with them you right. know um, and then along the way I met Matt Yep. Um, and Who is yet to be on the podcast. We recorded an episode. There were some issues. Don't worry. You guys will get to hear from Matt. Yeah. So that's that's how you know me through Matt. Right. Through Matt. Yep. Um, and Will, I've always ridden with. I'm not sure. You probably met Will through Matt, too, though. 100%. Yeah. yeah. He was sharing the studio. Yeah. You guys were all in that studio. Yep. Yeah. And, and Andy was over there, too. Andy, I, I, that's literally how I met all of you well, guys. Well, Andy yeah. was one of the ones that I grew up with riding. Like, I started riding. He was one of the first. Ah, uh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Um, and Andy was really into photography from like earlier than most of us. Is he? Uh, so that's interesting. And I definitely want to have Andy on too. But is he? Um, did he kind of instill that spark in you guys, or I don't was know. it just more that he was into it and you just knew that? No, he was into it, and uh, I think I did video stuff before I did photography. Ah, like we'd right. always just video each other. Right, because I think that's the same with Matt and Will, right? Like, you guys would do videos because yeah. you'd make BMX. So yeah. growing up, I used to skate. I wasn't very good. Um, but we would make skate videos to an extent, and it was just more of us recording. I don't think we ever produced anything, yeah. really. I didn't really feel like an artist at that point yeah. with the video. Just it was just like, yeah, document. Right. Oh. You want to watch your friends do big tricks. That's basically what it was. It was like, I want proof that you did that three set. Oh, I want proof yeah, that you did yeah, that yeah. grind. That's all that really was. Yeah, and just imitating what we saw. Like, we'd see a video, then we'd make a video. Yeah. 
Yeah, and watching videos was the best. So for those that don't know, if you didn't grow up doing any of that kind of, call it extreme sport or whatever, but yeah. it was that was the ritual, right? If I'm not mistaken, is you would sit down in your buddy's basement or wherever in the room, you'd watch a video and you'd be like, yo, let's go out and ride. Yeah. Let's go out and hit that that rail. Let's go out and hit that big jump. like Because it would motivate you, you get pumped, and those videos would contain not only you know tricks, but then like the antics in between that yeah. you know teenagers would uh, get into, the jackasses, yeah. if you yeah. will. And that's, that's really funny. I just made the connection with my nephews. That they watch stuff, and then they go do it. They go like, do it, man. That's it. You're motivated. Like what? They watch uh, Power Rangers, and then they think they're Power Rangers. And you're like, yo, you let's know? go be Power Rangers right now. Or like, oh, I want to watch uh, when these kids play video games. It's like, I want to watch video games. It's like, then go play video. I don't know if they go play video games after they yeah, watch them. Yeah, that's a weird thing now. I feel like that isn't a disconnect. You know what's interesting? Let's talk about that for a second. I might have talked about this on the podcast before, so I apologize to the audience. But with you, right? The video games thing. So I was around a bunch of people where like that's what they did, video games, and they were into it, like super into it. And I'm not because I don't I don't play online. Like I grew up where like you just played by yourself. Yeah. Maybe if there was someone sitting next to you, that's who you played with. Like that's yeah. the extent of yeah. that. But now everyone plays online, right? But what they do is they'll play online, they'll record it, they'll put it on YouTube, whatever, and then they hope that people are watching. I've seen some kids even record it the night before and then they'll rewatch their own match the day after. And I'm like, that's kinda weird. But then I also think about it, because people will criticize us, like, oh, it's stupid, kids are watching video games, they're just watching people, you know, pretend to play, or they're watching other people play some, some game, right? Mm. And I think to myself, I'm like, what's baseball? Right. What's a, what's a football fan doing? You're watching a bunch of other people play a sport that you don't play. Yeah. So if nothing else, watching the video game and then being able to directly play it, that's kind of one up on football, unless you're a football player, but I got a feeling... Even if the football players do, right? They're watching it to kind of see what they did wrong. Like, hey, uh, I realized where I should have run off. I should have broke to the right a little bit. Okay, cool. And then I, all that stuff is kind of connected. So it's just funny when someone made that connection to me. I'm like, that's kind of what, what any other sport is. And then when you think about fantasy sports, it's like it's even <laughs> kind of less because it's like you're literally playing a game. You're watching a game to play a game. I don't yeah. know. It's an interesting approach. Um, no. so, so BMX, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So um – what, what you you would make videos, yeah. So you guys would make videos. Um, you got into doing video. You would record videos more than you started doing photography. Sorry, I'm kind of circling back over there. Yeah, that's that's where I started with the video stuff. And then in high school, I took some photography classes. And oh, cool. You know, it's one of those. I was one of those kids where like I didn't really want to go to college, mm. and um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do either. So yeah. just went into photography school at Pear. Ah, cool. And. Um, I don't know, I got kind of burnt out after going, so like I just started a, a job that had nothing to do with um, photography, and I was doing low-voltage electrical work for a while. Interesting. So you say you got burnt out. So you were in school, you majored in photography, right? And yeah. then you graduate, and you're kind of like, eh? Yeah, and then it's like, how, what am I going to do? Like, well, I guess, how, I get, how right, what's, do? what's the opportunity? You go work for like some, you know, Macy's thing at the mall, and you're taking portraits? Yeah, I mean, or? I've never been the business type person, so like it was hard for me to start my own business and stuff. Yeah. Um, and, you know, then to get back to, that, you know, the job that I had with, without, uh, you know, there's nothing to do with photography, and Matt at the same time, after that job ended, like maybe four years after that, um, we both shot a wedding together, and it was you know Matt um, got the job and everything, and I just shot with him. Yeah. And then uh, from that day on, we just we had uh, we started weddings. shooting weddings. Yeah. And you guys shot a lot of weddings. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's so and that's how I met Matt because that's I hired Matt to shoot my wedding. Yeah. Um, you weren't able to attend. I think, I don't know if you had already moved to Hawaii or maybe no, you were I shooting another... No, I think we had double booked. You had double, so day. you were shooting another wedding. That's yeah. right, yeah. So yeah. Andy came. Um, that's right, because, yeah, you were BSC photo. Yeah, and uh, it's perfect because, like I said, I'm not a business person, <laughs> Matt, so... Let him run the books? Matt, let him do that? Yeah, Matt being a friend, you know, he always treated me well. and Right. Um, it's easy. I was re literally just a photographer with him. I wasn't really his assistant unless I was helping him with portraits and stuff. And right. I mean, I didn't mind that at all. Nope. Um, so he, he really just let me just be a photographer with him, you yeah. know, and uh, it was really good. That's cool. So, so that was, so you went to school for photography. So obviously stepping into doing, shooting weddings is sort of like, yeah, I know how to use a camera. Like it's not that big a deal. If anything, it's just more learning 
how the day goes, right? How the flow of a wedding goes. Yeah, and I, I really never got sick of the weddings. I just, my passion to start this farm was, was greater. You was know? just like, there, yeah. Um, this is, to this day, it's probably the best job I ever had. You That's know, awesome. like it, I always loved to do it. And uh, I, see, I don't do photography as, anymore as much. I want to get back into it but because I'm doing the videos now. Um, it's kind of the same. Which is like, it's crazy how hard video is. It's a different a world, right? It's a different world. So um, for, for those interested, what camera? You still shoot with that Sony? Yeah, I switched to Sony. Because um, you were like, Canon. Right towards the end of working with Matt. Um, he hated that I had Sony because <laughs> they're so new and like they weren't really there yet. Because you got yet, the A7R or is it the Mark II? A7R2. A7R2. You got the A7R2. Which is outdated now. Right. Um, but that's the 40 megapixel beast. That's the big guy. Yeah. Because I remember you let me do a shoot here in the studio with that and I, those images were freaking dope. Yeah. They were good. No, they're so you're really using good. that for your video stuff. Yeah. Cool. But it is. It's a different beast, right? Like just thinking about your shots versus like snapping a still. Versus now, okay, I need to assemble multiple clips to tell that story that I would have told in just one grab or, you know, five grabs, right? So now I need everything to flow and it needs to look nice. It needs to be steady or maybe it doesn't. How am I telling my story? Do I want it to be shaky? Do I want it to be smooth? There's so many more mm -hmm. variables, <laughs> but there are arguably way cooler toys in the video world. <laughs> like way cooler. Just just from the stuff that I've been, stabilizers and recorders and and just other things like a uh, focus pullers like there's all this cool stuff that you can do with video yeah i got a i got a stabilizer gimbal smaller one and it, the cool nice. thing about the sony is you could use a small gimbal for a sony you know yeah, you don't have to get lightweight. those big things that you have to carry around yeah um yeah and, i mean I, I love to do the video stuff now but it's just really hard for it's me. a lot and not only video right because what comes with video is audio so you got to make sure you got decent or decent enough audio. Yeah, I, I did end up getting a um, an external mic for it because you got it. Um, I use I still use I use um, autofocus with the Sony because it's so good. Oh yeah. Which a lot of video people just use manual because um, it doesn't work that good. But Sony right. is really um, it's a little tricky to get used to. But yeah. if you get used to it and know what um, modes to use, right, you can really almost get it good like every time like anything man learn your tools L learn learn the tools that you have and then yeah you figure you figure the workarounds for all that stuff yeah so um you got the the autofocus and uh it just it works yeah a lot of the time with it you know yeah. so that's good um so so you're doing more video now than you were doing photo yeah but you kind of started with video with BMX, right? <laughs> it's just, and then the uh, photo that was there kind of in between. No, so that's, yeah. I mean, it's interesting how there are, there are those, um, that those things like those things happen. And, and I want to touch upon a point that you just made before was that, you know, uh, doing the photography thing, like you never got tired of it, but you said you had the passion to, to do farming more than photography. So for those listening, like w when you're in a situation where, where, where you're thinking about like, okay, I'm, I'm working this job, whatever it is, whether it's photography, which some people might say, oh, it's amazing to be in a photographer. Like, how would you leave that? It's like, mm -hmm. well, I have a deeper passion, right? Yeah. And one of the things that, that, I, that I, I like to ask people when I meet for the first time versus like, hey, what do you do? Mm -hmm. It's like, what's your passion, man? Yeah. And it's cool to get a reaction out of them to be like, whoa, that's weird. And some people take offense to that because it's like, dude, that's so personal. It's like, no, man, why wouldn't you want to share your passion versus just what you do? Yeah, because you might hate what you do. You might hate what you do. And in your case, what you did was photography, wedding photography, right? Yeah. Um, but then when you think about what's your passion, in this case, it, it would be farming, right? I'm, I'm making that assumption. Um, yeah, I mean, but I, just have, from what you I said. have others, but yeah, that's like the main one now. And we've pretty much sacrificed everything. Our living situation is everything. less than ideal. Yeah, man. You know, you're, we're almost you're living like in a shipping container. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> off the grid, man. Like you're, you're living in a shipping container in paradise, arguably yeah. in paradise. Yeah. But you're right, man. You sacrificed a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. We, we have very little money and we're just, we're just uh, farming and hoping it pays off later, you know, but, right. uh, but won't it be cool when you're 75 years old and you're thinking back on your life and you go, I did it, man. Yeah. Even if it means you got to come back to the States and you got to work as a wedding photographer or you got to go back to being an electrician, whatever it is, won't it be cool just to have that for your own self to say, I tried it, man. And, yeah. and I'm, I'm saying that to you as I'm saying that to myself, right? I mean, that's, and I'm saying that also to those listening, like, why wouldn't you want to at least try? And I realized that not everyone's in that situation. This is what I was talking about with my mom before. Mm -hmm. So just before I sat down with Mike to record, um, my mom got her first tattoo today, which was awesome. <laughs> um, she got it from George. George was on the podcast. So for those listening, if you want to listen to the episode with George, um, 
George is an old childhood friend and he became a tattoo artist. And my mom was like, I'm not going to let anyone other than George do it. So let's do it. So we went there just to kind of sit down and get an idea. And he was like, I could do it today if you want. And she was like, okay. I actually made a little video on that. So I'll probably share that too. Yeah, yeah. She just went for it and it was cool. And then we were just talking about life and we kind of got into some deep conversation and, and I was sharing with her almost not, not so much in like an approval sense, but almost in a way to like say to her, like, Hey ma, like this is what I'm doing. I'm doing it for me. And she's like, yeah, you should like, I realized that, hey, I don't have a big house right now, like, and I might not, right? But it's okay because I'm able to be with my wife, I'm able to be with my daughter and my new daughter coming, like I'm able to spend time with my family, and I'm able to do something I love for a living, why wouldn't I try to do that? Why wouldn't I want to do that? Look, you can always get another job. I, I say that, you know, quote unquote, <laughs> you can always get another job. I feel fortunate that I feel that way, but yeah, man, why not? Yeah. You can't always pursue your passion. I feel like this is a new revolution that that is coming out totally, where more man. people are doing this where yeah. it just it's because it feels right too yeah. you know like when you're doing something you love it feels much different dude you're not working yeah. I mean arguably you know the video thing as we were discussing like that's a production right but maybe it's because you're not as passionate but when you're out there you're digging holes you, you're pruning you're doing whatever it is I'm, I'm you know I'm not a farmer I don't know what you do on a day to day but pretty close right? when you're doing that stuff it's not like ugh I gotta go pull the weeds. I gotta go pruning. It's like, no, I can't wait to prune this because yeah. I want to make sure this plant survives. I want it to grow and flourish. And yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, picture when you're young and your parents tell you to go cut the lawn. You hate doing it. But Hated it. When I'm doing it for myself, I'm like, you're like, yo, I can't wait to cut the lawn. Yeah, yeah, I like to do it now. Isn't that so? Isn't that so crazy how that flips? And then again, it, it goes to that point of like, why would you want to do something that you enjoy? So, I, I mean, I commend you, and, and, and I'm, I appreciate you coming on and making time, right? Because you're only visiting for a short amount of time. Yeah. But to be able to share that, right, I think there is a big connection, whether it be, you know, photography, BMX, farming, anything, man. If you're passionate about something, you, you owe it to yourself as a human as best as you can to try to pursue that. And again, I, I'll, I, I can't reiterate enough the fact that I recognize that it's not just so easy for everyone to drop everything and just try to pursue a passion, especially when it comes down to the financials of it. Mm. And with YouTube, as I was a viewer early on, um, just being influenced by people to do this stuff and just yeah. just take one step every day towards your goal. Like you need right. to know what you want to get to eventually. Sure, you should but, have a goal. I agree. I mean, and it, make it a realistic goal, right? And just every day do one thing. Right. That gets you closer to that goal, dude. I, you can't just boom overnight. Like I'm here, I want to be there. You know. That's a great point. You're right because it, it's not going to happen. And I think right, like you had said, there's sort of this boom and there's this trend of like everyone wanting to pursue their own thing. But then I think there's also this idea that well, how come it hasn't happened for me yet? Yeah. It's like how come my videos aren't viral? It's like well, okay, what did you produce? And it's like did you start to? There is you know apparently quote unquote there's a formula to creating a viral video. And there are some studies psychologically that would deduce and say well here are the things that are consistent in a viral video so are you following that format or no okay so then don't be surprised so there is research and there is you know um some sort of back-end psychology that that would determine those types of things but it is figuring out or or i guess i should say if that's what motivates you learning that stuff should be exciting yeah. and and i've tried to do a little bit of research on that to see like okay what are these people doing or or when i see the people that are successful that motivate and inspire me like you were saying what do they have in common? Like, what are they doing? Okay, cool. So let me take one step towards that. Let me make a YouTube channel. Boom, goal done. Right. Sweet. Like, that was it. And then the next goal for me was to have a custom URL. So I literally asked people, I was like, hey, can you guys just subscribe to my page? I literally need 100 subscribers before YouTube will let me put slash Steve Walter photo. Boom, done. Cool. So yeah. far, so good. I mean, it's one thing, one That's thing. That's it, little steps. And I even do that with the, the uh, we call it food forest. Like, food because forest? it's not a farm, it's not an orchard. I like it. We're just growing food in a permaculture way where things, we, we just plant them and they grow. And then, like, pretty much you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Um, so it's, permaculture is, like, the most efficient way to plant, where you do the least amount of work with Dope. the most amount of reward. Yeah. And so, like, when I'm just planting things i'm like imagine if i planted one tree a day for a year you would have 365 so trees. trees dude you know? you're right like, and do you think just do one thing a day it adds up over a year you're right you and, know? and it's hard to in the moment it's hard to think about those right. small things because you want to leap to the because to the you end want goal. i just want 300 trees how come i can't just have 300 trees next week well because it's work <laughs> 
And it's it's an interesting thing to to think about that because and maybe it's always been that way, but I think now more than ever is that instant gratification. I know that sounds cliche, but things mm-hmm. that are cliche are true, true. right? Mm-hmm. Like there's something to them, but people want that instant reward. And if you don't have that, then they do something else. And and I sort of feel like for those that kind of get into photography to just like make a quick buck, mm-hmm. and then it's like, wait, I'm not making a whole bunch of money. It's like, well, first of all, as a photographer, you're not going to be, you know, I had this conversation with Matt. It's like, not going to be a millionaire as a photographer, but I'm okay with that. Yeah. I don't want to be a stockbroker that hates his life and lives for the money and has to maintain that. No, I, I'm cool with being a photographer and an artist that kind of goes up and down here and there and, and I get to enjoy things, at yeah. least by my definition. So I, it's an interesting thing that, yeah, you can't have that immediately, but it should be a satisfying feeling to say, okay, I'm going to do this. Cool, I did that. I'm going to do this. Cool, I did that. There was some motivational speaker that says, you know, um, you should make your bed every morning, right? Mm-hmm. If you make your bed every morning, you can literally check one thing off of the list for your things to do for the day so you've accomplished the goal. I made my bed. Yeah. What's next? It's really nice to come home or what, when you're ready for bed and <laughs> yeah, the bed's made. Yeah, you're yeah. like, oh, sweet. It's all nice right now. I mean, the last thing you want to do before you go to bed is make your bed. <laughs> no, you don't want to do that. Nobody wants to do that. No, of course. So it's, it's interesting to think about that. So I think it's a good point that you say. It's like, yeah, man, I'm going to plant a tree today. And then maybe next month I can plant a tree. So how are you – so now that I'm thinking about that, sorry, ADD moment, where are you getting these trees from? Are you importing them? Are they local? Or, or? No, some you can start no, – this is really interesting. Are you starting with seeds? Um, some you can. Oh, some wow. you can't. Interesting. Now, um, so what are I some? didn't know that when I first started. No. So I'd eat, you know, say an avocado, I'd plant the seed – um, a mango, plant the seed. Uh, I don't know if you, you would um, recognize these fruits, but like longan, lychee, rambutan. Lychee, I know. Yeah. They're all like in the, I think, soap fruit family. Or, soap fruit? Yeah. That's a thing, soap fruit. <laughs> yeah. Ah, okay. Um, New to me. But all these plants, trees, they don't produce true to seed. So the seed that you planted, it's not, it's not going to taste the same. Wait a second. So, as what's, the fruit. so, so what's true to seed? Is true that, to that's seed a chemical is, compound or some type no, of... No, no. True to seed. True to seed. Gotcha. Yeah. I thought you were saying true to seed. Like okay. that was like a thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. True to seed. True to seed. So it will, that means it'll taste exactly like the fruit you ate. Okay. So is that more of... Because I'm thinking about this like in nature, right? So if an avocado falls on the ground, it mm-hmm. wilts away, there's a seed, it goes into the ground. You're telling me that won't grow the same as the tree that it fell from? No. Interesting. So you would almost have to clone that avocado that's tree. That's what they do. <gasps> So for those that don't know, cloning is basically you're cutting off a branch of an avocado, or I'm simplifying the process, and then you plant that, and then that roots. No, no, no. So, you, so to say that avocado drop, that one sprouted, that's not the same as the mother. Right. You take a branch from the mother and tape it onto the, the, uh, Get the, the seed. Frig it's called out. grafting. So that's where the botany comes in, too. Yeah. That's where the cool stuff comes in. So you basically make a cut that's the same on both branches. Right, right. And, and then, then they, you, you tape it <gasps> with special tape. Well, that's how you make all these hybrid plants. Yeah. That's how you make, like, yellow... Uh, uh, I saw a yellow uh, watermelon the other day, and I was like, that's that's weird to me. Yellow watermelon? It tasted just like red watermelon, but it was yellow. I mean, yeah, it's all, like, mutants, and then they're replicated. So, like, every avocado variety that has been created it has been a, like a seedling so you will get mutants that taste good like every orange that you've ever had is usually from a clone right but if somebody wants to let's say invent a new uh, orange yeah you have to have hundreds of mistakes because when you do it with, uh. with citrus the only thing that comes out usually is a sour like lemon type uh, fruit right but every one in a thousand, it'll be sweet. this new, like, uh, what is it, the common one, like cuties or something? Cuties. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. The small little yeah. oranges, right? So or the, the... that's pretty much pa- a patented fruit. <gasps> that's a one of a kind. Like, they own that. Interesting. That's cool. Sorry, there's an alarm going off. My phone's ringing. But no, that's, <laughs> I didn't realize that. Yeah. But cool. then there are ones that grow true to seed. So, um, are you kidding me? The computer's ringing right now. So I just I, I muted it. You're supposed to mute it at the computer. Sorry for if you guys couldn't hear that. My apologies. Um, <laughs> but wow. Okay, so that's nuts. So you you got to learn that the hard way, right? Like yeah. Well, you I had already you started. To... You know, these, these <laughs> avocados been growing for a year, and then I go to permaculture classes that um, they were actually free. The um, 
they they got a grant from the country, the state. Oh wow! To just put on these classes to teach people yeah, how to farm. I mean, previously, they were charging like ten bucks for them, but they got this grant, uh, free classes now, and they they had a class <sighs> called um, how to grow a complete diet, and it was. It was like 20 week course or something once a week and it was like just what we needed at the right time that's cool and uh so to answer the question with the avocados and everything like <laughs> yeah you have a 50 50 percent chance of getting, a, of good getting fruit. a good fruit it won't be the same as the other one it could be right. better but most right you know most likely it's around the same Right. Some are But inedible. you might get, you might produce 30 avocado from the tree and you're like, ah, these kind of taste off. Yeah. Like it's not as. Yeah. It could be watery, fibrous. You right. Know? <gasps> but to ensure that you plant the seed and you graft it with the yeah. mother. Or you buy them. Like most or people just, do it because it is a hard process. It's a time consuming process. Yeah. And so that's they, again, that instant gratification. How come I don't have my tree? Well, yeah. dude, buy the tree. Don't wait for it. Don't wait for it to grow. So that's really interesting. So see, I learned something new today for sure and and you know i had an idea of of what happened but i didn't realize that and and most people probably don't so for those listening yeah, I, really... I hope that you guys all had a moment where you're like oh i didn't know that yeah um and that right there dude that's an art form like i i, I say it kind of jokingly like everything is art and that's when i came up with the title I was like dude everything's art it's like no but it kind of is man that's obviously a scientific form too right that yeah, and even science mean, is an art. <laughs> well, think about photography, how technical it is, but it's also art. It's art, man. It's you know? super technical. Like, if, for those, when you think back, you know, 50 years, right? That there was no auto mode, right? Yeah. I'm assuming 50 years ago there was no auto mode. I'm pretty sure there wasn't. <laughs> um, that it, before auto mode, what did you do? You had to know the science mm-hmm. of what's an f-stop, what's a shutter speed, what's my film speed, and how does that all connect and correlate? Yeah. And... When I did go to school, um, that's all I wanted to learn. Was the science? Was the science. How do I make the best picture? And I wasn't really concerned with um, Interesting. the creative side of it. Ah, so you wanted the technical. Yeah. And then when I got out, I was like, my pictures really aren't that good. <laughs> <laughs> these aren't cool. No one it, likes these. What is Because, you know, like, you need both. You do, You man. need to know both. 100%. And, and there is, right, there is something... And I think about that, right, I akin that to guitar playing. That there are virtuosos that know how to play perfectly, technically, every, but there's no soul to it, right? Yeah. There's no feeling, there's no right. emotion. Same. It's like, you might be able to play a scale so fast, faster than anywhere in the world, but it's like, yeah, you're just playing a scale, man. Like, change it up. There's blues players that'll play four notes and make you want to cry. Right. And it's yeah. so, it's crazy to think about that, right? So there's, I need the art. And that blues player might not know what a scale is. He might be like, I don't know, I'm just playing these notes, they sound good together. So it's that, right, that photography, that there are people that, you know, you hear people, it's like, oh, he's got a good eye. And it's like, yeah, I don't know the technical settings. And it took me a while to kind of appreciate that, that for a while I kind of, like you, was, or sometimes I'm on that sort of purist side, like you need to know the science. I mean, you do, but only so much, man. It only gets you so far. Yeah, because, because a, a phone, there's right. no settings on that. Like you, on an iPhone, you can't uncover any of those settings. You can point it, you can make it brighter or darker, that's it. It's all the art of it is so fascinating because somebody I follow a lot of people on Instagram. I know they're not photographers, but I'm, every picture I'm like, wow, this this is art and beautiful. It's, yeah, and it's technically not the best picture. You sure, know, right. it's whatever they're doing. The subject composition separation they may even be doing it by accident but they know it's good right after they don't know what they're doing but they're yes. like this is good and i think that that happens to a lot of people not, not a lot of people i'm just guessing but when i hear people say like this is good i don't know why but it's good it's like well it's because you're you're following these yeah we know rules. why we know why <laughs> i can break it down i can tell you well here's four reasons why this is a good image yeah but someone might just point and go oh this feels good yeah and it's like oh it's because you have this you know nice it's, backlit like you know, a good short light it has drama and it's blah, blah 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 it's this natural gift people have yeah that i didn't have i had to like learn it you had to work and for it that. was harder to learn that than the technical stuff for me Interesting. So yeah. going to school, right? You're like, hey, I want to learn the science. Boom, got the science. No problem. I know what aperture. I know all that stuff. Yeah. But now it's things like composition, right? Mood, emotion, uh, lighting. Was lighting a thing that you guys talked about at all? Yeah, or was it I just mean, more of how lighting. It yeah, we did a lot of classes with lighting, and um, and again, though, it was more technical. How do I how do I get the perfect ratio? The and perfect uh, triangle. You know, like, right, right, and uh, less about. 
Just put it where it looks good, man. Right, because I see some people not know a thing about lighting. None. But they'll just mess around till it looks good. They'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, so one of the things that I do, um, I teach lighting classes, right? Yeah. And And I, I guess uh, to the point where I fancy myself enough of a, a good, um, I was going to say a good understander of light, but that's not English at all. Um, I'm, I'm a good, I mean, I understand light to an extent and I feel very comfortable teaching that to people and more to the point of what we just talked about is, Hey, here's how you get that perfect triangle, but put it where you want. Man. Yeah. Like if you move it forward and you move it back, here's what's going to happen. If you move it to the side, and you move it to the side, here's what's going to happen. So it's up to you to determine where do you want to put it? And I think that there are a lot of classes that will teach you, here's how I light this. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to do that. I want to teach people, here's how light works. Right. Light whatever you want. I want you to know, here's what fall off is. Here's the inverse square law. Here's, you know, ratios. Let's talk about ratios. Let's talk about triangle. Let's talk about balance. Let's talk about all this stuff. But you apply it where you want to apply it. Yeah. And I kind of talked about this in a, in a, a Tuesday tip where it's like, uh, the way I kind of thought about it is it's almost like teaching someone to fish, but not, but it's almost like, don't get wrapped up in like the fishing pole and the, the fishing line that I'm using. Don't mm-hmm. get wrapped up in the lures. Like, let me just teach you how to physically fish. You figure out the lure that works best for you. Yeah. You figure out the pole that you like that's comfortable for you. So it doesn't matter what light you use. It doesn't matter what softbox you use. Just make good light. Here's how you do it. Yeah. I don't know. That's interesting. So, so that's interesting to me that that, that was that sort of reverse view. And I think the same is for my brother where he's technically, he gets it, man. He gets the science. Yeah. But then there are things and he, he makes a good composition as you do too, man. Like you obviously figured it out clearly. Yeah. Um, and I, I think just simplifying images yeah. to, to bring out the focus of the image. So what, what did you do? If you don't mind sharing, if you can recall the process that you did to sort of simplify that stuff. I mean, it was so long ago I overcome <laughs> sure. it, you know, but I think just shooting more and seeing yeah. what I like yeah. and and then replicating that. So it's just the process of trial and error. Trial and error, man. Because you know, th- there's really nothing you can do to make yourself creative. Right? Isn't that interesting? <laughs> like you you have that or you don't. Or you, you understand what's going to make a good image. And then you can only hope for things to just all line up. Yeah. And then in your brain go, ooh, this would be cool. Your, your brain triggers something that says, let me try this. Yeah. And then you look at it and you go, oh, that's cool. So yeah, definitely shooting with Matt, all, all those weddings, just putting myself out there. Repetition. Um, shooting a lot. I mean, thousands of images yeah. every wedding. And then just sitting down, looking at them. Looking at them, critiquing them. Did you, did you go through critiques in school? Did you guys do much of that? Um, I don't remember it that much, but I'm sure we had some. Yeah, that, that for me, so if you didn't know, I don't know if you knew this, but I went to school for graphic design. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's my background and we did a lot of critiquing. Um, and it's, you know, I think it's a, it's a helpful thing when you're, when you're surrounded by people that are, that are motivated in the right way. Um, and our classes were, there were some people that kind of got a little bit bitter and that were a little bit like, you know, resentful for those that they recognize like, damn, you're a better designer than I am. And it's like, I'm going to cut down your work just because I don't want you to be better than me. It's like, you have to, as the artist, you have to recognize, it's like, dude, I know your work wasn't as strong as what I created, so don't just cut me down to cut me down. But anyway, that, that aside, when the teachers would give me the feedback, the people that I trusted, that's basically what I'm saying is, when you're getting critiqued by people that you trust, it's a super helpful tool to then say, hey, here's what I would have done in that image. And then hopefully some little bits of that stuff eventually over time stick. And then as you're reviewing all your wedding images and you look at your shot, and even if you can self-critique and go, ah, I should have moved over a foot and then did put the yeah. thing over here, position that, I should have shot through that, ah, damn it. And then you encounter that again, you go, ooh, ooh, let me do it now. Yeah. And, and you it, improve. It is, yeah, it's just, you're, you could do your own critiquing because yeah. you know what's good, but like then you, you shoot it, you bring it back, and it doesn't look like what you wanted it to. And Okay, I got to do it that way now. Right. It's, it's being able to... I guess it's that, it's just like in, in life, like a self-awareness, right? And sometimes it's hard with photography or any art, right? Because you might create something that looks good to you, but then the general public might not react the same way. And I say, good, fuck them. So what, man? <laughs> like, if you create something and you're like, dude, this is amazing, it's amazing because yeah. you defined it that way, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but then there is something to be said about, okay, well, I'm in a place where I'm making amazing stuff to me, but no one else thinks it's amazing. What am I doing and what can I do differently? Okay, cool. Then you consult someone and then someone might say, hey dude, look, you wanna start selling your work? Here's what you need to do. And then that could be that sort of sellout, right? And maybe why, why people from your YouTube were like, 
oh, he's got a Patreon. He's trying to make a buck. He's just doing this for money. No, man, I'm not doing this for money, but I do want to live. So it's, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm learning from this process. So if it means that, you know, if I'm taking wedding, let's just use weddings, right? Because um, we both shot weddings. If at the end of the day, like I know I need to get that clean photo that they're going to want to print and hang on their wall that to you and I might be boring. Yeah. Right? Everyone else, the general population is going to say, that's amazing. And we're going to go, nah, it's not. But the thing that we take, that creative composition or um, was it Sam Hurd? Is that, the, is that his name? I think Sam Hurd. Mm -hmm. um, he uses a lot of negative space, abstract composition, like all this stuff that we look at that I look at and I go, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. But the general pop public might be like, that's weird. Why did he leave all that space over there? I don't understand. Like, they're so small in the bottom corner of the picture. It's like this big print. It's like, no, man, you don't get it. It's for feeling, it's emotion. That's it, And man. that's what photography, for me, I always, my favorite thing in the world to shoot is, is people in nature. Yeah. So like, uh, just someone hiking along a trail, beautiful backdrop. Yeah. I mean, it tells so much yep. the story and it's, I mean, I just love that. Well, I imagine in Hawaii you get to do a good amount of that. Yeah. I mean, like you said, you're doing more video, but the opportunities with landscape, at least in Hawaii, have got to be tremendous. Yeah. It's, and, I mean, that even to get it on video. Right. You know? I mean, tell the story a different way with video. Right. Um, yeah. So that that's basically what I like to do with uh, that's photography. Dope. That's dope, dude. Now, yeah. Sweet. Well, Mike, thank you so much. Sorry, Mike C. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for taking time to do this, to sit down and chat and share your experiences, your life. I hope people can kind of find motivation in this. If not, they watch your YouTube channel. Maybe find some motivation there, right? Move to Hawaii, get a shipping crate. I had a buddy of mine, George, again, the guy, the tattoo artist. Yeah. He lived in Hawaii for a year. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that he was slumming it or not, but like he was, you know, not living the same way he was living back home, but he was living in paradise, man. So it's, uh, it's cool. And then... I think it's interesting that, that people can find that and say, you know what, let me just try it. Let me go for it. And how long have you been out in Hawaii? Um, a total of like two and a half years, but on and off. So. Two and a half years. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, but I mean, I'm far from where I want to be, my goal, but sure. um, I do want to get this quote out there that helped me. And uh, it's, if you want to do something badly enough, you'll make it happen. If you don't, you'll make an excuse. Uh, that's so, so for all true. those people that, oh, I, I, I wish I could do that, but I can't, that's, that, that's their excuse. I can't do it because of this or that. Yep. So every time you make an excuse, just realize you're not making it happen. Right. You're, you're putting up a wall, so pull down the walls. If you want it to happen, make it happen. And it, like I said, it's tough what I'm doing right now. And sure. It's, I've wanted to leave and just get a normal job and be able to go on vacations and right. stuff. <laughs> but, right. Um, eventually, I'll be able to, but, yeah. you know. But right now, you're living a dream, dude. Well, that's what most people think, but <laughs> it's, it's hard. It's hard, but um, it's funny. I've only been away for now four weeks, and I, I can't wait to get back, you know. Right. So... And, and what I mean by living the dream in that you're, you're pursuing oh, your goals. okay, yeah, yeah. Then you're, it makes you're, sense. You're, right, because people are going to sit and say, dude, you live in paradise. It's like, well, hold on a second. Yeah, it's Hawaii, but it's hard work. But yeah. m more to my point was that you, you're living your no, dream. No, I agree with that 100%. You, yeah. You're following your goal. And that's, dude, you can't ask for more as a human. Yeah. That's it. So I commend you, dude. Thank you so much. Thanks Appreciate for having it. me.